So let us first make this figure. Okay, if you have copied this figure, so let us discuss this 4.54. So this question says, find the frequency of a small oscillation of arrangement shown in the figure 4.16. So we have to find frequency, that this means we have to find time period and 1 by, divide, 1 by time period divided by, that will give you frequency. So let us find first time period and frequency is nothing, <coughs> nothing but 1 by time period. So we have to find time period first. Question says the radius of the pulley is capital R. So radius of this pulley. So this is a pulley and having radius capital R. Its moment of inertia relative to rotation axis is I. So moment of inertia of this pulley is I. This means this pulley is not massless. The mass of the object is M. So a mass of this body is M. The spring a stiffness constant is K. So a spring constant is given to you K. The mass of thread and mass of the spring may be negligible. So a spring has no mass, thread also has no mass. And there is no slipping over the pulley. So this thread, basically, uh, there is no slipping. If it goes this side, so it rolls. So this means there is a pure rolling of case, so no slipping. So this is also given to you, no slipping. And find out the there is no friction in the axis of the pulley also. So here you have no friction. No friction in the pulley. Everywhere you have no friction. Now let us try to find out what is the time period for this system. So what we will do is, uh, first let us find equilibrium condition. So once you leave this system as it is, what will happen? This mass will go down and this spring will be slightly stretched. Are you getting or not? Let us say initially this spring is just stretched by x naught. So if this string is just stretched by x naught, there is a force that is k x naught that is acting in this thread this side. So what is happening? If you see, this spring is basically pulling this thread this side by k x naught. And if this is pulling this side with k x naught, initially the system is in the rest, this side also we will have k x naught force this means kx0 will be up also and mz will be downward and kx0 will act up so now if I consider the equilibrium of mass m so I can write equilibrium condition so what is the equilibrium condition you can write yourself equilibrium condition so now I will have equilibrium condition And this will be basically mg is equals to kx0, mg is equals to kx0. So this is my first equation we will have and later we will use this equation. Now to find the time period what we do is we displace this mass by x and this goes up by x. So let us make another diagram. So what we have done is now this spring is basically a stretched by distance x so I have basically lowered this object by x so this object was initially here now this object has been lowered by x to find out the SHM motion what we do is we displace the masses by x and we see the forces acting on this mass so now we will be interested in finding the forces on this, <laughs> this mass sorry so mz is acting downward now the tension will be k, now the total extension in this spring will be, initially we will have x naught 
now we have added x extra so total a string tension will be k x not plus x so this means now this string is uh, move this side by k x not plus x now you see tension this side and tension this side this time will not be equal because this disk once you this once you do this by distance x and you leave what will happen this block will have a tendency to go up and this disk will have a tendency to roll this side are you getting or not are you getting so this disk will have a tendency to roll this side so this side tension will be different so let us say tension this side is t and this side tension is t are you getting now this block basically i have displayed this side the block have a tendency to go up so let us say acceleration up is a and now this has a acceleration alpha now the, this is the case of pure rolling so you will have this point has acceleration a and r alpha so if you see uh, pure rolling case you will have a acceleration r alpha in the this direction a is also in the, this direction so i can write a is equals to r into alpha now this is because this disk is in the pure rolling are you getting now if i write upward force so what is the upward forces we have t minus mz is equals to mass into acceleration so mass is m and acceleration is a but a is a can be right written as so a can be written as also minus d2x by dt square why i am writing a as a negative because you see i have displaced x in this direction but the acceleration is negative side of the x and that's why there will be a negative sign so minus m d2x by dt square let us say this is equation number 2 now the next equation i can write from here torque is equals to y alpha so what is the torque that is acting on this disc so this is one force a x not plus x and this will have a torque of distance r so this multiplied by r will give you torque in this direction minus t into r that is opposite torque is equals to i alpha and i for disk is given to you i and alpha is nothing but a by r and a is nothing but minus d2x by dt square so this is equation number third now if you see if you add these equations let us divide by r so equation 3 i can write in a modified way k x not plus k x and let us divide by r so minus t is equals to i by r square minus d2 x by dt square so this is the equation 3 and in a slightly modified way i can write something like this now if i add equation number 2 and equation number 3 so if i add equation number 2 and equation number 3 t goes out so i will have k x not plus k x minus m z is equals to mass this side will have uh, i by r square m so m plus i by r square i by r square i think you are able to see into minus d2x by dt square so let us put minus before so d2x by dt square are you getting now you see the equilibrium condition so you will have kx not minus mz plus kx this is equals to minus m plus i by r square d2x by dt square now you will have equilibrium condition if you see this will also always this kind this kind of term will always will get cancel out so you see equilibrium condition you have the equation or one you will have some bare here equilibrium condition that is m g equals to kx not so if i apply the equilibrium condition this becomes zero so this term is zero from equilibrium condition are you getting 
So from equilibrium condition you can say this term is 0. Now things are very easy. So you will have minus kx is equals to m plus i by r square d2x by dt square. I can write in a slightly better way. So d2x by dt square this is equals to minus k divided by m plus i by r square into x. So this seems d2x by so this is equivalent of d2x by dt square is equals to minus omega square x. So omega will be in this case I think you are able to understand under root k by m plus i by r square. So time period is 2 pi by omega you know now. Now see what is the important, <laughs> important part you have in this question is uh, you have to have first write down the equilibrium condition and then the second important part you have that you displace the mass in the downward direction by x and write down the forces that is acting on the all object. Third important view you have when you have displaced by distance x in that case tension both side of both side of the pulley will not be equal because pulley is not massless and pulley is also rotating. Fourth important point we have in this case is you see if the mg goes down mg goes up by expression a the disc will roll by r alpha and any point on the disc is in the case of pure rolling. So if you see this point of the disc is in case of pure rolling. So this point I can find the acceleration of this point either using this side I, I can find the acceleration using r alpha. So this point if I consider it on disc will have acceleration of alpha r alpha. If I consider this point on thread it will, it will have acceleration a both should will have same acceleration so I will have condition a is equals to r alpha that is very very important. Now the last important point we have here that is I have assumed acceleration is a is up but this is minus d2x by dt square because my x is increasing the downward direction and now acceleration is up so acceleration my acceleration is basically minus d2x by dt square this is very important if you simply take d2x by dt square what you will have you will not have a minus sign here. Now we will discuss the next problem. I think all of you have copied this one. Pretty easy problem. <laughs>